So finally, we're good to go. We um, made it. We made it. Yeah, we so made it right now. Um, so a very good evening or a lovely day to all the viewers and listeners to the oh, yeah. this special special episode of Five Six Seven Eight podcast, which is obviously going to be broadcasted in English. So uh, yes, just please. keep in mind. <laughs> Um, why no Bulgarian for you today? Um, no. Um, okay then. Not today. I then mean. not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> for everybody just listening, uh, please keep in mind that I am joined by the one and only Mr. John Camaro. Hello. So a very warm welcome to you, and uh, really thank you for taking the time. It's the very first time we tried to do a mobile setup of yeah. this uh, thing, and we had our fair amount of issues, like three hours yeah, or something. I don't setting know. Yeah, uh, felt forever. Um, so let's just get straight into cool. it as quick as possible because it's super late. Right yeah. now. Uh, just by the way, I need to point out you are taking this time right before your flight early morning and yeah, it is highly appreciated. Yeah, so um, good. So let's start. Who is John Kemato as a dancer? Um, where did who he start? I, where did I start? I mean, I have a, a long background because um, I've been dancing for over 20 years. Oh. Um, I guess for um, where I did start, um, I didn't start as an actual like choreography dancer. I started as a b-boy, so I was an underground dancer. Um, I started b-boying um, when I was 16 years old in, in high school. And b-boying, I think um, I had a different mentality. Um, before I, after I joined b-boying, um, I joined a dance team uh, as a b-boy. So um, I joined the, my first dance team on Culture Shock, Culture Shock and um, Urban Effects. And as, a, as I joined the team, as a b-boy, I had to do my regular b-boy sets. But then along with the dance team, we had to also learn the dance choreography. And that was horrible. The most horrible dancer in the world. Like, you wouldn't believe it. So I think, um, as me as a perfectionist, um, I started falling in love with choreography. So b-boy and choreography, my b-boy skills were up. And then it kind of just started doing one of these and balancing out. Um, this was all in San Diego. Um, after Coach Shock, I was there for about three years, and I decided to move towards um, LA, LA and more um, Fullerton area, which I joined this team called uh, Team Millennia. Along with this time period, I also joined a team called Chill Factor, which uh, consisted of a lot, a lot of my friends now. After Team Millennia, I also did America's Best Dance Crew. I did it twice. Oh, of course, it didn't win. I did it again. I also created a dance team called Most Wanted Crew. You guys might know that. I created this team with um, the creator of World of Dance. So, History behind that, myself and another person named Myron Martin, God bless you. He was one of the creators of World of Dance. If you guys don't know him, know him because he was the originator. So Myron and I decided to create this team of uh, all-star choreographers. So we decided to handpick all these dancers. The reason why is because, well, not because we wanted to originally do World of, um, we didn't want to originally do America's Best Dance Crew. We wanted to do uh, World of Dance. We wanted to be like the World of Dance like um, headliners. So we created this team. So as we created this team, we decided, okay, why not do America's Best Dance Crew? So most wanted and myself, uh, we competed at America's Best Dance Crew, consisted of a lot of like popular choreographers. After most wanted, started traveling a lot more internationally. Now I ended up in Italy. I've been in Italy for about five years, um, and that's kind of how my story goes. Just nice and quick. Yeah, super nice and quick, and uh, real quick, uh, just. Uh Things to point out. So first of all, if you don't know, uh, culture shock in the USA is like the maybe I, I would not say the biggest, but like a it was huge one. Of the, it was really one of the first um, teams that were created worldwide. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think there was a lot, a few of them inside inside the United States, and there's a few of them outside of um, inside Europe as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then about most wanted. So maybe for the younger audience, maybe you're not as familiar, but there was this period for sure between. Let's call it 2011, 12 until yeah. like 2014, 15, exactly. kind of sort of ish. Uh, it was like the most popular, or at least it felt like yeah. this to us here in Europe. Um, uh, we were speaking outside of the podcast that like you were influencing uh, myself and my crew a lot, mm -hmm. and also a lot of other dancers here in the area because I remember very well it was like i and me like with yes, with their yes. team uh and, and then most wanted and then i remember it was i think season seven of abdc where you went like almost to the finals yeah, with, yeah. with most wanted and then i don't know if it was like this in the u.s but here everybody was so shocked that yeah you i mean were... um, there's a lot of politics behind it i mean not i wouldn't it's probably not good for me to say on air i mean i don't know of like, course then yeah don't. but i mean because like, um um, we knew that as far as our popularity, we would we would also always win the the votes mm -hmm. every week. 
-hmm. So it was kind of, it was more politics. And I felt that also because a lot of us as individuals are most wanted, we also didn't completely agree with the rules that they had. So we were kind of very rebellious. So that's probably maybe one of the reasons why mm -hmm. we didn't advance. Because, you know, if you don't follow by the rules, then course, yeah. you'll be like kicked off. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, we assumed, or also everyone else assumed that we were supposed to make it to the finals. Or I think in the very beginning of the competition, everyone thought we were supposed to win. Mm -hmm. But it, alongside with that, um, not to sound very arrogant at all, but before, before America's Best Dance School, we were already established as choreographers and dancers. Of course. So not saying that we needed the TV show. But it was a, a good boost for like promotion for us and everything. Of course, and uh, just again to point out real, real quick. Uh, so, for example, some names that you might know, or if not, just check them out. But besides yourself, it's uh, Lando Wilkins, it's Brent yeah. Post, it's Ben Martin, it's Ian Eastwood. It's all people who still do this yeah. thing on a very high level. Uh, all of you, which I think is, I don't know about a lot of crews that uh, establish this for kind of everybody of their members. Yeah. You know, so that's. Uh, Huge, huge thing. And then, as you said already, moving to Italy. Just real quick, how did that come up? Because, like, living in LA, all this style, you know, yeah. a famous choreographer. And this is another thing. You guys were famous before the Instagram thing. Yeah. It was yeah. before, it was like with the concept videos on YouTube, mm -hmm. with Twitter, all of that. And uh, now it's different, of course, because you can be 16 and have millions of followers. Yeah. Uh, back then, I don't know, I, I don't believe so. It was not as uh, common. Yeah, because I think um, as soon as America's Best Dance Crew started for us, which was season, season seven, is when Instagram like initially started. So, I mean, it wasn't like the main focus for social media for us, but then, of course, like as, as dancers, like we would use that to help uh, boost our, our name and our appearance. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, yeah. Like, and from, from there, living this life in LA like because in LA I think I was never there myself but uh, the biggest struggle is to actually break through to to get noticed yeah. to get that first booking to get that first job it's because it's, it's so much talent there yeah. right now especially I think pff, bananas but yeah. that's how it looks to us so what made you step away from that I think um also as like for me being part of the, the dance community I've seen a lot of generations you know a mm -hmm. lot of generations um, moving to different styles or what people like and how people move. I think for me personally, just uh, for my story, um, what happened was I was there in LA and I was working, I was constantly teaching and I felt like my, my job and my life was just plateauing. It was just basically doing the same thing. And although, although I was um, uh, a popular choreographer, a famous choreographer, I felt like I wasn't accomplishing a lot. I felt like my name was just being very stagnant. So I, and I realized that I needed something new in my life. Because like I, I was explaining before, is that I would just teach, I would drive a lot, I would spend more money than I was making. A lot of the jobs that were making more money were overseas. And at this point, um, the, um, the community started becoming more saturated with a lot of choreographers, a lot of dancers. People, it, it's when dancing started to blow up. Everyone mm -hmm. wanted to be a choreographer. Everyone wanted to have the star life. Everyone wanted to travel and like do this thing called dance, you know? So at the time it was, it started becoming another generation of like new dancers, which thank God, I mean, the new generation now is fire, really, really dope. Much respect to them, I love them. And then it's just understanding that like, also as a choreographer, you, you're not gonna be the most popular all the time. Of course, you know, yeah. of course, and I've accepted that. And for me, it was just that I didn't wanna give up on dancing. Mm -hmm. You know, cause if you're in LA and you're doing the same thing and you feel like you're kind of like being filtered out, I didn't want to be filtered out. So I needed something new for myself. And it was around um, 30 because I still traveled um, a lot in doing um, summer camps. So at the end of one of my years and, and for my summer camp, um, I couldn't say go to this, um, this camp in Italy. Um, two of my best friends live there. And every year I go there, they're always like, hey, why don't you just move to Italy? Move to Italy. And every year I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then one year I was like, I need something new for my life. I feel like I'm being stagnant. You know, I'm not doing anything. I need something new to excite me. And I said, you know what? Maybe I should just make the move to Italy because, you know, there's more jobs here. There's more opportunities. Um, I can better my life. I can be adapted to a new culture. I can learn a new language. So I felt like, you know what, instead of just thinking about it too much, just go for it. So I just decided to make the move. Literally at the end of my tour, I said, I'm not going home. I'm just going to stay here. And it's been five years now. Is five this? years. Yeah, five, five years. Five full years. Five full years. You, it's funny you mentioned the language because, uh, again, we're uh, here together with also Zena from Italy and I heard you guys talk a lot in Italian. Yeah. And I was 
honestly impressed because you know we have this thing if if English is your native language, mm -hmm. you normally don't bother like normally most of the time yeah. you don't bother with a second language or stuff. Uh, you were humble enough to admit it. It's still super difficult for it you. It is. But it really is, man. I'm not gonna lie. For um, my year, it seems like you know fluent or yes, okay, thank you. like I'm at so, least close. I'm so happy. Maybe now the Italians <laughs> are like you. Yeah, with all the language. Oh, 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 yeah. But I mean, um, it was. It, it's honestly, it's. Um, I think it's a confidence factor because because for me trying to speak another language, I mess it up all the time. And I feel a lot of my friends, like Italian friends, will laugh at me, and be like, "No, that's not right. That's not right." And I get embarrassed. I'm like, "At least I'm trying, right?" Yeah, of course. And they're just completely laughing. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a really big thing for me. It's another big step that I'm really proud of, like learning another language, because like, I'm, like going from English to any other language is completely difficult, especially at a at an older age. You don't soak things up very, very easily. Yeah. And now it's just like, I'm not gonna lie, when I am intoxicated, I am completely fluent. Okay, funny, uh, funny piece. <laughs> yeah, moving on. <laughs> uh, so, okay, then coming to Europe at the age of 30, you, you said, uh, this is a, another interesting perspective because we as dancers, we know that our careers are quite short as athletes yeah. as well. And of course, you can always move on in one way or another, like maybe having a dance studio or yes, something yeah, else. Yeah, but true. your active career as a dancer and also choreographer, even. Uh, is quite quite short, so you're already maybe like in the end of your peak, yeah. meaning mm -hmm. like okay, I'm not 20 anymore. I can, uh, and then wasn't it scary for you to do it now? Because if you're 18, you can try it, and then if yeah, it doesn't work, yeah, to have a, a life after. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was my initial goal so far, or what I'm still trying to accomplish, is still being like um, current. Is my main goal now. It's um, not to not to rise above anybody else, but to keep my current name to say like, okay, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still going strong. I'm 35 years old, but I'm still going to try to keep killing. I'm going to try to take class as many classes as possible. Um, I'm going to keep dancing. I'm going to keep pushing my art. Mm -hmm. So okay, now we're in Italy finally, and yeah. then you start building a network. Let's uh, speak like this. Uh, you start teaching in Rome, correct? Right. And also traveling a lot more in Europe now mm -hmm. throughout the year, not just for the big summer camps. Yeah, which was throughout a, the year. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there is this inevitable question, the level in Europe mm -hmm. versus the level in USA. So how would you describe it as, as your initial impressions yeah. and what you feel like now? Yeah, I think um, the idea of LA becomes so... Um, I it's like, the idea of LA becomes so driven in some people's minds, especially from Europe, because they, they believe that all the best dancers are in LA. Personally, I think there's great dancers, a lot of amazing dancers in Europe. The problem for me, for example, a lot of people like to go to, to LA to train. I think, of course, it's great because there's a, there's a huge community there. There's a lot of dance studios, a lot of open classes that everybody can study from. But I mean, you can get the same kind of training in Europe, not even have to spend so much money to go to LA because there's amazing choreographers just as good or even better out in Europe. I think um, for different countries, levels are, are completely different. A lot, of, a lot of the people that I've seen talent from in Spain, Germany, France, there's a lot of great, great dancers here. I mean, compared to LA, because a lot of the people from, that are in LA now come from Europe. So you see a lot of amazing dancers, but most of them just decided to move there. I think as far as versatility wise, a lot of people are there in LA because there's where all the jobs are. You know, if you want to work with a celebrity, if you want to do commercials, if you want to work with all these kind of things, people go to LA. But as far as level, I think it's it could be the same. Like you just have to understand where to look. Don't you think though that that maybe this is a bit of a bold statement? Because whenever we were doing all of these Q and A's at the dance camps, like mm -hmm. you know the big dance camps, and every time this is this question, like you know, how would you rate the dance here? Every choreographer ever would say, "Yeah, in LA it's better," you know. So it's like I remember Kyle Hanagami one time explaining, like, so you know your best dancers here around you, like at this camp. If you take them, it's like the mid level in LA, and you can still go higher. Do you believe it's like this, I or believe, it's? I mean, I don't know. As far as I didn't, I'm not sure how long ago that was, but now there's just some amazing dancers in general. You can find some really high levels in LA, 
because a lot of the people in LA have been built from the ground up as dancers. If you know a lot of the popular ones, they've been dancing since they were like six or seven. This is the reason why they're so good. If you have a dancer that started from six to seven, from six or seven years old here, they could be just as good. If the only reason why you would assume that they're better is because they have more outlets to learn from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because for example, you know, you can understand a dancer is able to take the classes of your favorite choreographers. That's why you assume they're better. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they're entirely better because maybe they're good at dancing one style. They're dancing just this movement. But I mean, there's some dancers out here that can do more than just one style. You know what I mean? It just depends on what your preference is. Because I think there's all different types of dancers, all different levels. But I mean, you could say, yes, there's a high level in LA, but I mean, I don't think Europe is far behind. Very, very encouraging to hear. And then just moving on, on the logical niche, what mm -hmm. do you think about the European choreographers compared to USA choreographers in they, general? I mean, if you, again, like I was saying before, European choreographers, a lot of them are very dope. I think what's great about them, they still have a lot of hip hop essence, like the raw hip hop essence when they choreograph, which is amazing. A lot of um, the choreographers in LA, this is again, this is my personal opinion, I feel like some of it is also catered to the generation and the popularity of the dances that are, are happening now. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, also what's bad with that is that what popular choreographers that everyone sees in LA does, people from Europe will start, start copying. to tend to do the same thing. And I think this becomes an issue because when people start to do something as somebody else, this is why nothing evolves. You know what I mean? It's because people start to like one style of choreography, but they limit themselves to one style. And people always ask, how do I become myself? You just answer, you just understand the same question, like, what do you study? One person, because you study one person, you look like that one person. My recommendation is start to take more classes. Take more classes, you understand what you want and what you can adapt to who you are. One thing that very much surprised me um, about your stay here in Bulgaria right now was that you were also very interested in uh, when are the other teachers teaching? Because you were like, yeah, I would actually like to join a class, yeah. etc. I'm... So, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah, no, no, easy. Uh, my question is, uh, in that sense, is this how you manage to always evolve in your personal craft? Like always just striving for new yeah, things? Yeah, I think for me, um, personally, I don't, I wouldn't categorize myself as a choreographer, even though everyone labels me as that. I would rather be called a dancer. I mean, because I'm more known as a choreographer, of course, from what I'm doing, but my first love is dancing. You know, that's why I do try to take class if I'm not too tired. I am old, but I still really try to take class because it's my favorite thing. It's where I feel free. You know, I'm, um, when I'm choreographing, it's where I'm able to create something. But when I'm taking a class, it's when I feel free to let emotions out or like just dance and just dance the night away. You know what I mean? So um, I think for me personally, I just, I just feel it's also a good, a good role model perspective. Because if you have somebody like, um, not saying, I hate saying putting myself as a, at a high stature because I'm not that kind of person, but if you have like. But some, it's still facts though. Let, let's, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I like that you're humble, but. Yeah, yeah I mean, so, cause like, I mean, like, when my, one of my favorite things to do is take my students' classes. Like, you know, like if I taught them and then I jump into their class, they're like, what are you doing? Why are you taking my classes? Like, because I want to take my class. You know, I just want to dance. And people are very surprised by that, you know? And I want to make that initiative to see that. Um, there's no barriers. Uh, I would. I just want to dance. I want to take class. Like I'm not trying to like overstep on anybody. I'm not trying to outshine anybody. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm this choreographer. Watch me dance. I'm like, no. I just want to be able to take a class as a regular person, as a regular dancer, not to step on anything else. Just be that person. One thing, which is just a bit of an off topic. Your personal view when it comes to choreography in general and just dance as where it is now and by dance I mostly mean the urban street dance mm -hmm, what yeah. we are mostly like focused on. Uh, how do you think it's gonna evolve in like let's say five or ten more years just because when you look ten years back yeah. you can see for sure a rapid growth in quality yeah. let's just say like this uh, everything just gets better year by year. You already said it that the new generation is like. Oh yeah, no, of course. You cannot course. even figure it out. At least myself, I, I really don't know how those kids are like mm -hmm. nine years old and just like saying it. I, yeah, yeah. I don't know how they do it, but it's a fact. Yeah. So uh, of course, uh, credits to the teachers, of course, because mm -hmm. 
Uh, but how do you see it? Do you think there is going to be this point that it becomes irrelevant and then there is like the next thing? I think, personally, I feel that a lot of things go in a full circle. I feel, feel like things come back, you know, for like grooves or specific styles or whatever. Um, I mean, this could be just me saying in hopes. So like, I feel that the style that I do not won't make a full comeback, but I mean, it will start to generate again in this type of movement of like isolation and like this kind of feeling behind the movements with this R&B stuff. I mean, I'm hoping it does, but I, I feel that a lot of things are starting to move into groove and then starting to break things down and then isolation and stuff. I feel, I'm not exactly sure what's going to go in the next years because I mean, I couldn't predict it. Of course. Yes, but I mean, I feel like I, I don't have doubts that are the next generation, the five years are still going to be amazing. You can you can say that, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, for the next five years, I'm still gonna be here doing the same thing. Like, I'm still gonna be dancing. I'm still doing what I love. Nothing's gonna change. I'm gonna be here while the generation changes. I feel like um, at this point, now is when I re I want to step my foot back more into the community. This is why, like, being in LA that last month, I want to push more because like, the the new generation has a lot of talents but they're only learning so, so much. And I want to be able to like help them learn more. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, the essence of the question on one side was the fact that I'm sure you're familiar that, for example, the freestylers, or let's just say the more uh, foundation-oriented dancers, like, for example, uh, even steps like locking and popping, yeah, yeah. etc., they would sometimes go like, yeah, currently we are destroying the dance, you know, because it's so commercial now and it's yeah. uh, growing so much and kids nowadays, they just want choreography. They don't want to learn the foundation. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, where does it lead to if you if you just continue like this? Yeah. But uh, it's uh, very refreshing to hear that you're actually optimistic about it because oh, yeah, I've had discussions and discussions and it's like, of course, we, uh, as you said, you can never predict what's going to happen. Yeah, 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 but uh, I also share the opinion that in general, it's just exciting yeah. to I see. Yeah, I mean, as you think about like, what's, what, what do you see that's more popular now? When you watch everyone's dance video now, past video, everyone does a quick freestyle at the end, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, we, mm -hmm. are, we are moving back into that circle where before, if you remember when hip hop was, was the dancing, and then when my generation came, people were like, why are you taking the essence away from hip hop when you're just moving really slow and doing pictures? You know, they were saying, you're not grooving enough, you're not dancing enough because of the style that I did before. It was more feeling, more of this contemporary isolation. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, like maybe the old, hip, old school hip hop heads were like, yo, that's not dancing. You know, it was argumentative. So as you can see, what I'm saying is that like, it went from freestyle, this house dance, this party dance into this style into another generation, to another generation, and now it's kind of coming back full circle, you know what I mean? So this is why I'm saying that I don't have doubt that it's not going to be amazing because everything that's happening now has already happened before. You know, we're just taking it like the way people dress, the way everyone's like styling themselves. These this baggy clothes everyone's wearing now, dude, that was in the 90s. That was back then. We used to wear that before. Then it changed to like skinny, tighter clothes. Now it's coming back with the bigger clothes, you know? Of course. Everything comes back full circle. So I have no doubt in my mind that nothing will be lost. Okay, good. And then, um, first time in Bulgaria for you, if I'm yeah. not mistaken right now. Uh, yes. You were here for a competition, a yeah. dance championship. Um, so I need to ask, because this is also the reason we are able to talk to each yeah. other right now. What are your impressions of what you saw today in terms of dancing, in terms of the dancers? Yeah, how I mean, for example, feel? from what I saw today, um, like I, I was, I was trying to get knowledge about the dance community and how it was built. From my knowledge of understanding what it is, it's fairly, fairly new. Well, how yes, new? yes, and no. Yeah. I mean, define new. Then, like, but I mean, as far as like community growing, like, like this is the one of the biggest competitions that's going on, correct? Yeah, I would engage in saying this it's like i can just briefly refresh it there was this like period like 10 years ago kind of sort of there was this one federation who yeah. was doing like a lot of big dance events but they were all mixed together and then street dance for us was like you do a combo but then you uh, do it also to another song you yeah, know so it's like you don't choreograph to the song so yeah you, you do it like a, just like a, a four like four eight counts yeah just for example and then like, you mix the songs yeah, 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 it, it yeah, was yeah, like this it was just like the after step up 
era yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. We were just like, yeah, you just know, the, like the battle kind of essence. Of yeah. course, we didn't know what we we're doing basically. Yeah. And then for a, a long time, I would feel it's just my opinion that there wasn't a lot going on. There were some mm-hmm. very nice jams, like we were bringing people, like for example, a jam on it was a very big event. Like they were bringing Mr. Wiggles and like stuff yeah, yeah. for uh, guys who are like gods to mm-hmm. us, you know. Uh, but then there was a gap, like three, four years, nothing. That's at least how it felt yeah. to me. Of course, there was some events, but nothing on a huge scale. Yeah. Then some things tried and they didn't work. So if if you mean like that, so I feel like, those type of events. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, not those kind of events. I feel like the community hasn't been, like not not, not established, but I mean, it hasn't been consistent. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I could say that. Yeah. So it feels like from what you're saying, like a long time ago, there was something and then it stopped. And then there was something again, and then it stopped and there was something. So I feel that it hasn't really established itself yet. It feels like it was basically putting its foot in the water to test it and took it back out and said, it's not warm enough, you know? Then it put it back in. And then now I feel like after the two years you're doing this competition, people are starting to like dip their feet into a little bit more. So, I mean, in that sense of new for me, you know, where people are saying, okay, gradually moving up. As far as what I've seen, I mean, it's, I'm not going to say it's like every other competition where some levels are some good and some bad, but I mean, it's, it's, it's what's normal for, for any other country that I've never been to or like any new competition. As far as level of dance, there was all sorts of levels of dance. Some not, I wouldn't want to say bad because I can't say any, any dancing is bad. I mean, there's, there's respectable training and there's obvious that there wasn't enough training behind it, you know? Um, but there was some teams that just blew my mind. Like literally, I'm like, where, where have you been? You know, I'm like, this, these are teams that I've seen that can compete at like any other competition at a higher level. So, I mean, for me, from, from what I was expecting, because I've never been here before, I honestly, I'll be completely honest, guys, I had no expectation that I thought it was going to be lower. A lot lower. Some had my expectation and some just blew it through the roof for me. So I think in, in a sense of there's the expe- expectation was met and it actually built a little bit more. Seeing a lot of the dancers, seeing actually some of the little ones that I've seen, you know, some of those little, little ones, crazy. Absolutely insane. Like if you're watching this, big props to you guys because it really takes a lot of time and effort to train these kind of kids and their energy and the way they have their aspect and the way they present themselves was some, that's something that you teach over like five years, six years, but then I'm not sure how long they've been dancing, but they look like babies. So I don't even dance out of the room. So yeah, I mean, a lot of talent. Good, you can. Those are the type of dancer that, that I was exactly talking about. Like you see them and they're like eight and nine. Yeah. And it's like, when did you learn it? Exactly. Sometimes. But of yeah. course you can say, okay, the children are talented, but of course they have a job behind them, maybe a team of choreographers. Et exactly. Et yeah, no, of course, of course. Uh, and it's also a combination between the parents. They need to be supportive, yes. etc. They need very, to see the true. purpose in, in this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's uh, very nice to hear because from uh, uh, how long I know you right now, yeah. I could feel that you're being honest because yeah. I, I don't, Feel like you're gonna be the guy who just says it just because. No, really, because I mean, I, I, like I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned here, but I judge a lot of competitions, a lot, a lot. World of Dance, HHI, a lot of smaller competitions, a lot of bigger competitions, and I've seen a lot, of, a lot of dancing, a lot, a lot of dancing. And there's I mean, a few teams here that stand out a lot for me compared to what I've seen like, worldwide. There's a lot of teams that do need help, but I mean that comes again with progression. Like I'm saying, this is why I'm saying it feels like it's still new because like I said, you guys put your foot in and you start to slowly grow. People that probably just put their foot in like full leg are the ones that are like really pushy and that's why they stand out. Of course, yeah. And uh, just of course, if we talk about advices, like pieces of advice, let's say for everybody who just wants to get better and I don't want this to sound cliche or trivial yeah, no, or whatever, the point is, from your perspective, how do you specifically approach it? Because obviously, okay, work hard, like dedicated, yeah, yeah. blah. No, no, for sure. What else? I think um, if you really want to be successful at dance or want to become a good dancer, 
it really starts with your own mindset. A lot of people will say, oh, I want to be this, but they never put their 100%. I think this also goes in life. Like, whatever you put into something, that actually doesn't look right. Whatever you put into something is what you'll get back. If you say, oh, I've given my 100%, like, have you really given 100%? I'm pretty sure most of the time it's enough. For me, like, it's really how driven you are. And if you are driven, I think to, to, to grow more and advance more is to take more classes. Train more. Train, train, train more. A lot of people, I think it's one big aspect that I've noticed between Europe and America, the hours of training are completely different. Completely, completely different. Honestly, the way you guys train sometimes, I mean, it can work for people, is nothing. Some people train two hours a day and that's it. Or two hours, like three hours in the whole week or three hours, two days a week, you know? Back at home, six hours. Six hours, three times a week. We would have a thing called Hell Week before a big competition for two weeks. We rehearse double rehearsals, which is about eight hours. No one complains. No one says anything. No one, no one says, oh, I'm tired. I'm this, I'm this. No one, everyone just pushes. I think this is a different mentality that America has over here. This training process. Um, training is a big issue. Class taking is a big issue. Don't limit yourself to just one style. Um, broaden your horizons. Teachers, don't limit your students to just you or saying that they can't train anywhere else because that's how you lose them. I feel like you really need to, if you want your students to grow, let them grow. Really, really, really let them grow and not limit them. Um, yeah, it all starts in your head. If you, if you want it that bad, you have to go get it. Then let's, uh, let's just have this a bit philosophical question. But you know yeah. what? What I think is one of the problems with what you're saying, like the full like training eight hours yeah. a day. So, because I could say for myself that I also grew in a generation like this that we yeah. never complained about training. But maybe it was just because I was a kid and I even didn't know what was happening. I was yeah. just there, yeah. you know. But the point is, dancing is like, you put so much work into this like three minutes on stage yeah. let's call it like this or five or ten and you need to like if you want to make it like pitch perfect it's like crazy amount of training sessions or you should be very very skilled which again co comes through crazy amount of training sessions yeah. and i think one of the reasons people are maybe not as motivated to really push the the level to the maximum ability mm -hmm. just because it we always would joke like it, it passes like this you know your time on stage yeah but then if you need to prepare for like three months four months whatever like two mm -hmm. weeks full as you said maybe it's easy to just lose the motivation be yeah, like no, really why be 1000 percent perfect when you can be like 80 percent and it still works but then it's way less effort yeah how do you think I mean, I don't know if there is a specific answer, but how should this be approached? Um, for you, are you saying, like, for example, for dancers that are not as motivated? Yes. Compared to what dancers on your team that are not already motivated, or because saying that you already have a team, and then you have some that are motivated and some that are not, or the whole team feels. For me, it's just about dancers and dancers because I know dancers for, who, for sure, invest like. I would say 100% and I know a lot who invest like 80, you know, yeah. or 70, just because is it really worth it? Yeah. That's I mean, the this, question. That's the problem. Like if there's a person that second guesses the dance and second guesses, is it really worth it? You can't push that person to say, yo, change your mind. You know, it's impossible. Like that's not fair to the person, honestly, I think. Because I mean, you can give them advice and you can give them inspiration, but all in all, it's not your choice, it's their choice. You can only guide them in the right di direction saying, yo, but this is going to be fun, we get to do it together. But ultimately, if it's their hobby, then it's their hobby. Like You can't push somebody to do something that they, they're not willing to do. You know, If you say, jump off a cliff, like, no, I don't want to. You're going to push them off the cliff? No, you're not going to. You know, like you can help them or guide somebody in a certain direction, but like you can't force anybody to do something they, they don't want to do. And especially in this generation now, people get butt hurt if you say, you have to do this. They're like, no, I don't. You know, now like you have to understand how to cater to these people. So for me, it's like, 
if you're the teacher, it's your job to make it as fun for them rather than telling them you have to do something. You have to understand that is they're not wanting to do this because I'm not doing a good job for them or is it because that's how they are. Like you have to find a certain balance. Like for me, like I don't want to push any of my dancers and my students to do something that they don't want to do. But I will be that person to inspire them, to help them grow in the direction that they do want to go to. If they want to take this as a hobby and be just a good dancer and not inspired to win something, I'll help them in that direction. Because I mean, I would love for them to win, but if they want just this, they can have that. You know, if I can help them in any way they want, I will do that. Okay, then some blitzes and then let's wrap it up. So okay. just a blitz round of uh, questions. Cool. So first of all, top three favorite choreographers of yours. Top three favorite choreographers um, from before or now? Where, um, whenever. Damn, I, can't, I can't give you just two. Okay, let me go. Then 30. <laughs> I could probably do 30. I'm, I'm going to give a few that comes on top of my head. Um, Brian, of course, is uh, one of my favorites. Ian's great. Uh, Pat Cruz, Sean Aristo, uh, Chris Martin, uh, my boy Jed Furano, there's uh, back at home in Italy, Simone. I think these are like the top ones that I really love too because I feel like they're the ones that help me push more. Top three countries in Europe in terms of dance level? Dance level. Um, Spain, Germany, Italy. Okay, that was very, very fast. If you need to do a dance team now, like a dream dance team, yeah. who would you have in it? A dream dance team? Mm -hmm. um, all I'll, time. All time, I would do all of the Kinjas and all of Most Wanted. Easy. Very, <laughs> very, very easy. Yeah, yeah. It, it would be a Most nice Kinjas. <laughs> a nice, nice idea. Yeah, I'm crazy, yeah. Okay, then, uh, favorite choreography of yours? Favorite choreography of mine? Damn, I don't know. I think my favorite choreography, even though I, I could say it's my favorite and my, my least favorite, is probably Mad Neo. I think the reason why is because it's the piece of choreography that helped build my career internationally. Okay, and then, uh, last but not least, let's just say if you have anything to say in a free matter of speech to whoever is watching this or listening this um, I think whoever's watching this help me I'm just kidding <laughs> I'm dying no I mean whoever's watching this I feel if, if it's this is just advice for Bulgaria I mean I'm assuming that this will be where the main goal is um, don't stop what you're doing if you really really love dance keep pushing yourself from what I saw today there's a lot of room to grow, a lot of room to grow. And I feel that it really puts your heart into it. And I'm really hoping that if I can come back next year, I would love to see that growth. Um, don't give up on your craft. Don't give up on your students, teachers, teach them the proper way, yeah? Really study what you need to know. Don't just copy things that you've seen. Give your students a piece of who you are, not a piece of what you've seen on the internet. Yeah, give them the, your art, give them your craft. Drive your students to a direction that moves forward, not to something that moves in a direction that goes with the generation or follows everyone in the bandwagon. Push yourself to your limits. Good, good enough. So um, I, I don't know if it's uh, okay to mention or not. If mention not, we can just cut it out. But the point is, you are coming back, as far as I know, to Bulgaria this summer. Oh, that's right. I am. Right? But I mean, uh, that's. Not enough time to grow. Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah but still, uh, we will be seeing you in the summer, hopefully, and hopefully for many more times yeah, in yeah. the I mean, recent I'm, future. I'm really excited to see how this pans out. Yeah, I want to see the talent that comes out. We're always going to excited to have you. I really want to thank you ever so much for your time right yeah, now. Yeah, of course. Because I know how precious it is for all of us. Yeah, <laughs> both of us look really Asian right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, I should think about that. So. For everybody who was listening and watching, thank you for tuning in. Good. My English is done. Yeah. Uh, thank you for tuning in once again. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something for yourself. This was yes. Jen Kemaro. It was a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. And now we're signing off. Peace.